the small town in Noble County hasn't had a pharmacy for more than a decade. It's a growing dilemma for many Hoosiers living in rural areas. The U.S. Rural Health Policy Analysis shows 630 rural communities that had at least one pharmacy in 2003 had none by 2018. Pillbox owner and president Greg Wynn recently opened the first licensed telepharmacy in the state and joins me now to explain how it could be good medicine for other small towns in Indiana. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Well, there are a lot of ways for people to get their prescriptions now. Uh, mail order, the traditional retail pharmacy, mm -hmm. but explain what is a telepharmacy? Yeah. So telepharmacy for the for the patient's viewpoint is very similar to a traditional pharmacy. Actually, probably customers might not even notice the difference when they walk into telepharmacy. We have the over-the-counter medications out front and the prescription medications behind the counter. But really the big difference is, is the pharmacist is not in the building. So our pharmacists that are checking your prescription in Albion, Indiana, is actually located in Warsaw, Indiana. So that pharmacist is checking prescriptions for patients in Warsaw and then also digitally or using technology to check prescriptions in Albion. And then after we've checked the prescription and uh, we're ready to do the patient counseling, we're doing that with a, we have a large iPad mounted to the countertop for the pharmacist patient counseling. And then we have actually another iPad that we pass through the drive-thru for the pharmacist to counsel patients at the drive-thru. Via video chat. Right. So just in general, why is there a need for telepharmacies in Indiana especially? Well, so these, there's a lot of communities in Indiana in the last 10 or 15 years that have lost their pharmacies. These pharmacies have closed and, and obviously no one's coming back to reopen a pharmacy in those communities. Um, and so it's, it's obvious they're not going to have a pharmacy unless something significant, disruptive like telepharmacy happens. So. And these communities that have no pharmacy, they're really their only option is mail order. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think you know, mail order is, is very convenient, but in my opinion, you, you're taking the pharmacist out of the equation. What we're really passionate about at Pillbox is when you get a new medication, we don't say, do you have any questions for the pharmacist, which actually is the, the, the law in Indiana is the pharmacy has to ask you if you'd like to talk to a pharmacist. But we actually say, now Kylie, I see this is something new for you. We'd like to have you talk to the pharmacist because we know when you start talking to the pharmacist, we will flush out clinical opportunities. We'll find out, you know, possibly you're, you just started uh, you know, something for arthritis, but you're still taking that. You know, a lot of arthritis patients, they've been self-medicating for a while before they get the prescription strength arthritis medicine. So our pharmacists can you know, catch that duplicate therapy. Or maybe you, know, you started taking an antidepressant and it, take, it tells you to take it one a day. Well, if you just get it in the mail and you take one a day, you don't know that that Wellbutrin actually makes you, you know, keeps you awake. And so you're taking it before you go to bed because it says take one a day, but now you're not sleeping. So then you start taking another medication so you can sleep. Whereas if you were to talk to your pharmacist, your pharmacist had the opportunity to say, you know, uh, Kylie, this is gonna keep you up. So be sure to take it in the morning. So it's about access to care. And opening your telepharmacy wasn't without its challenges. No legislation existed. Right. So you helped write that legislation. Do you think that will now be a framework to streamline uh, other telepharmacies opening throughout the state? Yeah, um, we, the legislation that we passed is very detailed. We talked to, there's probably about 10 other states in the United States that are doing telepharmacy and we communicated with as many as possible. And the, the legislation that we wrote is very detailed. Some people might say it's too detailed, but the beauty of it is, is yes, there's a framework now. And so I think any pharmacies, a lot of pharmacies could get into this and I would encourage them to do so. I do sincerely believe telepharmacy will make Hoosiers healthier because we're bringing pharmacists back into communication with our patients and so. And you have heard from other small towns already interested right. in doing the same. Right, uh, just what was it, the day before yesterday I was in a villa talking to the community leaders there about it and they're eager to have the same story as Albion. You know, their pharmacy closed you know, maybe about 13 years ago and they've wanted a pharmacy ever since and they don't have one. Um, I have a meeting this coming Wednesday with the community of Bourbon because they also, same story, you know, the pharmacy closed and no one has come back for over 10 years. Um, and so I'm, yeah, I'm excited to, to be able to do this for these small towns, but I can't take care of them all. So yeah, I would encourage other pharmacy owners to, to do this and feel free to reach out to me. I'd be oh. happy to talk about it. It's a victory for small town Indiana. So good luck as you move forward. Gary, back to you.